We are at the edge of revolution, cloud, big data and the, the, the new modern IT uh, trends which are happening. I consider that as a journey, it is an evolution and at the same time it's like a revolution where it is impacting every individual, every business. Uh, it is changing the way how the business used to conduct. Uh, it is changing the way how the people used to spend their life, whether it's a social life or professional life and so on. So, and uh, me as an IT pro, we used to, I mean, I spent like 20 years in the market after completing my engineering with the computer science. We used to only know about kilobyte, megabyte and gigabyte and terabyte. That's all I spent my life in this particular uh, amount of data where it was, we were handling. But uh, now, since two years, we have seen something called petabyte and exabyte and uh, uh, zettabyte, yottabyte and there is something beyond that also. They call brontobyte and there is uh, geobyte, those kind of things. So why we are resonating this kind of uh, terminology is the reason uh, because the data is being you know bulging and the data is coming from every object. The object it doesn't need to be be a necessary a computational object. It doesn't need to be a computational uh, device. Even a non-computational device is also they are uh, uh, element, uh, emitting the data. So the data is coming from all angles. So before. I don't know statistically how many companies they have really implemented as a BI solution, but still we can see major percentage of companies still they have not even implemented the BI, the business intelligence where they can make the real decisions. The decisions which are going to happen at the, the board level, the decisions which are strategic in nature, that is, we are not having the BI. And even if the BI is it is there implemented, but the decisions are not happening at the, the board level meeting even. And there is no real-time data which is already uh, fetchable where the decisions can be made. So there is information which is uh, on, in the heads of the uh, senior management and based on that information they are taking and there is a latency factor. So time constraint is also there. It is not just about uh, having the computational power to compute all the data which is being evolved from different uh, uh, different universal objects but also we need a computational power. Although we have computational, we can we could uh, put like 4 core and so many processors and so on which is available like new uh, brand, uh, a new family of servers but yes computation will happen but it will take its own time. Those kind of things, those kind of challenges. So what is new about the big data? Big data is nothing but it's a data. As for the gardener, what he mentioned, you know, by year 2020, big data will be again back to its own origin, which is data. It will be considered as a data only. So why we are calling big data? Because big data, because all objects around us, it is giving the data, it has certain attributes, irrespective of whether it's a computational object or non-computational object. It is giving uh, certain attributes and that the data need to be collected in order to promote your product, in order to promote your services, in order to have your own uh, 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 geographical presence and so on. So big data, it is not just about having data enterprise, a data warehouse where you are taking the data from different sources, but you are computing the data and the decisions are made. Now you are adding another dimension to that big data, which is the social data, which is the sensors data, which is the geographic uh, location data, each handheld, each uh, mobile phones and whatever you have, it is generating the data if you enable that one. Even when I came here to Dubai, when I switch on my uh, smartphone, of course, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever, they know where I am located exactly. Unless it is me who want to uh, share my location, yes. So based on that geographic location, there are recommendations will be made by different systems, different advertisers, different services are coming to me. So the decisions can be made more smarter by having that uh, coordinates or by having the location from your uh, positioning software or whatever you have. So all 
not only the business data which is coming from the core businesses from the different databases but also you have the data which was never been considered as a business data which is really required for making the business decisions things like that so i'll just So this is my agenda as you can see over here. So this is the agenda as you can see. Most likely uh, my, uh, my concept in today's presentation, I want to clarify the myths and uh, you know what is the reality for the big data and how the big data will be useful. I have, uh, I talked with different CIOs and they still consider the social data, it is non-business data, it's nonsense data. So which is not true. Social data, before you even you launch your product, there are people who are talking about your own product. We come up with a product, we come up with a solution, we come up with different services for different geographic locations. And we consider that this particular uh, thing is right based on the data which we have been uh, uh, taking from our different uh, business uh, repositories. Now, with the new concept, you may launch certain thing, but that thing will not get to the market. People have different views because they are really seeing the 360 view. Although we used to call like an enterprise data warehouse BI 360 view, that was not a real 360 view. I could say maybe that would be like 180 or 270 degrees view only. There is 25 percent view which is more than the 75 percent. We have old uh, saying 80-20 rule. They, we are doing 80 percent but we are actually not having the 80 percent uh, impact on the business on into, uh, in front of customers. We have to do that 20 which is the big data which is non-enterprise data where you have the 80 percent satisfaction of the customer. 80 percent uh, you can have a, a real professional impact, you can make the real decisions which, which are practical. So here uh, in this uh, presentation, what I am saying, anticipate, accelerate and differentiate. What we should anticipate? So it always, it is not about the technology, it is about the business, it is about the goals, it is about the objectives, it is about the strategy, it is about your prime key objectives, what you have for your company, what solution works for one customer. It may not uh, be necessary, the same thing will work for the other. So there is uh, some uniqueness. It also it depends on the different geographic locations as well. So you have to know what to, you have to know what to anticipate and how we should accelerate and what will be the differentiating factor. Those kind of things. So I will quickly jump to the, to the my other slide and that's what I was talking about. We have to know what we need to anticipate, what exactly we need, why we need the data. Maybe there are so many uh, companies who may not have the real data which really it will help them to uh, explore more business opportunities and things like that. So those are the challenges. So we were talking about three Vs which is very uh, common in terms of big data. We call volume, velocity and variety. This volume, lot, lot of uh, data which is coming from different uh, sources, from different objects and since we don't have that computational power which will really compute and give us the data where we can, where we, have, we could have a meaningful uh, data, where we can make the decisions and because of non-computational power, we couldn't do that. That's one of the challenge we have. And velocity, the data is available but it is not in the, uh, as, as real time as we expect. It is not giving the data. Now we have the, there are so many BI uh, tools or uh, uh, systems of working in different big organizations, and it takes like ten hours, twelve hours just to generate one BI report. So there is a computation is happening, but it is not really making the meaning where we have a lot of computational power. 
So volume is one of the challenge, velocity is one of the challenge, and variety is also one of the challenge. There are every object like we have the data, we have the Twitter data, we have the Facebook data, we have the LinkedIn data, there is some data which is coming from my positioning. My hands are going across and we are in the retail sector. I'm distributing a product and I don't know exactly what, where is the guy. If the guy he went and he delivered that particular product in order to improve the supply chain. So we need also to capture the positioning data, we need to capture the climatic data. I'm selling a heater as a company in a, when the, the temperature is like 50 degrees. So the temperature, the, the, the sentiments, all this will be considered in terms of big data. So for me, it's a challenge and at the same time, it's a like three dimension, which is like value management. You want to add value, what was given, it is not enough. So it's about the three value dimensions, I call. I try to elaborate in my next slides as well. And uh, they, as I was saying, like there are transformational factors which are happening. Mobile and internet has changed the whole world. 35% of uh, active, sub uh, active internet subscriptions is coming from uh, India and China only. And there was a power grid problem that happened in India a couple of months before. There was a tsunami and there is a uh, hurricane Sandy has happened. The data, the social data, it has played a big role in order to save the crisis. In order not to save, at least to take the preventive actions. Although, uh, I have been uh, closely watching the CNN and other news sources. The death uh, for this uh, new uh, disaster which has happened in the US, it was around 50. And it has happened because there is a lot of uh, preventive actions have been taken. They know, the government don't know how many people are there located at different geographic locations as well. So they were able to take uh, certain actions in order to rescue the humanity, in order to rescue the society. So, and the same thing with regards to the companies as well. The companies, they know what is the temperature. They were able to do the preventive uh, the planning, the disaster. Although there was uh, some uh, instances with Amazon and with other uh, big uh, cloud service providers has happened. But that, was, that has happened after taking the preventive actions. Maybe it could have been more than what it has happened. Those kind of things. So the data, what, what this particular statistic, what are the transformational factors and every, every uh, thing what you see, whether it's a mobile or internet or you talk about the social networking or you talk about the globalization and localization, everything it is, it is talking about the data. I will start from here, globalization and localization, there are so many people who is, uh, whose life, who have the digital life, who have the virtual life and virtual life is impacting the digital life. The, the real life. There is a virtual world and there is a real world where there is a physical world where I can see you, where I can talk to you people. But it has an impact. I am talking about the positive side. Where we can, what, what I do now, the world has become closer. The Google Glass example, the project, what they are doing. They are, they are, coming, they are developing a kind of glass where you can put it and you see the physical world and the same information you can find it in a virtual world. So every individual, again he will be like a human object, human data object, and he will generate the data. Although we have, we as a human being, we have a lot of diseases, and we have a certain characteristics and things like that, yes, it is giving the data. But with that, you can even find, if I, if I went to a new place, if I am looking at certain thing, and the same information, if you try to find out with the GPS, the Google project I am talking about, it will tell you, it will give you the information. Of course, the information has to be available in the digital or virtual world. So, this data, this virtual and digital world, it, it came closer. So, this is the globalization. Globalization in terms of outsourcing, globalization in terms of manpower, China and India has taken the lead and it is bringing the benefit. So, of course, there, is, there, there are pros and cons. There is nothing called like everything is good and there is nothing called everything is bad. So, I am talking about the positive side, which has a major percentage. <coughs> Sorry. There are a lot of people who do the chatting, who communicate, who is doing the business. There are Chinese people who is uh, chatting and doing things, you know. They are using the Google 
translated, they are translating. But in the new era, the, that you talk one language from one side, and the, it, there will be an interpreter, and it, there will, it, will, uh, it will translate and it will tell it its own native language. So machine learning it is playing a role in the big data. There is a predictive algorithm has been happening. The AI, artificial intelligence is being injected into each device, into computational device, into the devices which are receiving the data from the non-computational devices as well. So my, my objective to clarify what is the big data, it is, it is the reality, it is not something. But since there are challenges, we consider it's like a, a demo, it is something able or something which is non-useful, something irrelevant. This is what we think. And we think it's a non-business system. And even the cloud computing. I have been uh, delivering cloud computing sessions. At least eight days I have delivered within a couple of months. And last month I have delivered.